Well, good morning, everyone. Before we begin our study, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the study this morning, for the time that we have together to open your word and to receive light. We pray, Lord, for each person searching for truth. We know the particular needs that we all have. I pray for Heidi, for her eye appointment today. We just ask that uh, they can find out what's wrong. And uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, you can help us in this study, that you can open our eyes to the understanding of your word. We pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, We've been studying Judges chapter four, uh, uh, just going through uh, the line of Deborah and Barak. And I'm hoping today to get to actually Judges uh, five uh, to deal with the song of Deborah and Barak, because I was thinking that we should actually put that on a line as well. I was looking over it. Um, but uh, what, what we had looked at last time is we had, uh, got up to the arrival of the second angel. And uh, in doing that, we had addressed, um, so I'll show you here, I guess. Um, we had addressed uh, Samuel Snow's letters and lined them up with the history uh, from June 9 to October 13th. And so you can see that we, we placed in these, these other dates just to show you this structure, um, how February 16th, the writing of Snow's first letter, uh, lines up with these dates above. Um, we do have uh, this chart here. So this is what I call Samuel Snow's letters template. So you can see here, these are Samuel Snow's letters. Uh, the first letter when it's written, when it's published in The Midnight Cry, and then it's been republished in The Signs of the Times. And then you're gonna see um, April 19th is the center of the Kais of 126 days. You'll see the 13 days then to May Second, and then you have um, in here, yeah, that's going to be June 22nd. That's going to be the uh, Pentecost letter. And then you have three, 391 and a half days to July 18, 1845, uh, right? It's actually 26 days from June 22nd to July 18th. And you can see how this lines up with this history from June 9th. I, I had counted 120 days back to June 15th. And June 15th, uh, Julian is 391 and a half days from uh, June 2nd of the previous year on the Gregorian calendar. So, uh, And then you can see the July 27th to August 11th, that's um, Daniel uh, from Brazil, his prediction regarding October 13th. And so nothing happens on August 11th. It's just an anniversary date. And we have the Julian date as well, but these will line up with Samuel Snow's letters. So, um, so we can take that history then. When we look at this Deborah and Barak, we're saying that this message of whatever we would call it. It's, it's Samuel Snow's letters, but it's related to time. And remember, September 23rd, 2017, is me presenting from Samuel Snow's letters, uh, July 18, not July 18, 2020, but just July 18, 1844, as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. And so you can see how this unfolding of Samuel Snow's letters in this line would be uh, the formalization and the empowerment, and then finally the arrival of the second 
message. So somebody's asking me what microphone I'm, I am, I'm on. Let me see, I'm on. Not, I'm on the one, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to this one. Is that better? Iran? Yeah, okay. So the other one was just kind of echoey. You know, like yeah. in a tunnel or something. Okay, sorry about that. So hopefully people caught what I said. This one sounds yeah, you could understand what I said. It just didn't sound great. I don't need to state that yeah. all over. No, I think it, you, we could hear you. It's just sounded okay. different. Yeah, okay. So, but anyway, we can see this this structure, you know, how we had laid this down, uh, Deb and Brack, before. I mean, as we look at it in more detail, we can see uh, why we would uh, do this. So we have this invitation, which is the first angel's message, the ponderings, and the invitation accepted. And we can see that that lines up with August 11th, which lines up with April 19th. Now, April 19th is the arrival of the second angel in Millerite history. But this, this line of Samuel Snow's letters up to the Pentecost one is going to line up with October 13th. And so we're saying that's the second angel arriving in this line, right? So that means a new message arrives. And that new message arrives the way that we... Um, uh, we uh, Took, uh, dealt with the second angel had to do with these dates of that really had to do with the battle, right? So the second angel here is this battle that arrives October 13th. It's going to culminate in uh, the empowerment in the battle of September 7th. But then we have this March 27th, 2019 date. Um, and, and that we get from the 10,000, right? So from this number 10,000, we get uh, this symbol of March 27th. And that the simple way uh, to understand that is we, we can just take March 27th, or I mean, we can just take 10,000 and divide it by um, 360. So just turn it into years, right? So 10,000 divided by 365. 0.25, and we get this number 27.3, and then it has a longer decimal after that. But we have the symbol of March 27th. And then if we take 10,000 days and we place it on a line, um, so we know that it's it's 27.3 27, uh, 27 years, um, so we went back to uh, uh, November 9th, 1989, and it brings us to March 27th, 2017. So it brings us into the history of uh, 2017, which is part of this history because we're starting with September 23rd, 2017, and, um, and then that's going to um, give us that symbol of March 27th. Are we marking March 27th, 2019? So it doesn't bring us to March 27th, 2019, but it does bring us to the symbol of that line. Now, March 27th, 2017 is uh, an important part of our lines. Um, so when we look at March 27th, 2017, um, I'm just going to find it here. I can't remember where this is. Is there, this is in the other charts here. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, so 
I don't know if I can explain it right now. I can't find the chart. <clears throat> but uh, I guess what I could explain is, um, here, I'm just going to switch this. So what you're looking at here is a, uh, yeah, so the 10,000 ties us to Judges 7, verse uh, 3 to 6 as well. So we have that 10,000 show up there. Just wondering why this is doing this. Okay, that's better. So what you're looking at here is a, um, a line of the 777 days two periods of them that begin on the Mayan calendar date, December 21st, 2012. And, and these tend to be things in my personal life. Uh, obviously the center line there, there is my birthday when I turn 52. And, and then there's 777 days to March 27th, 2017. Now, March 27th, 2017 is three days before, or March 24th, 2017, Mark, pardon me, there that ends that period of 777 days, is three days before March 27th, 2017. So, so that 10,000 brings us three days past. Now, this March 27th, 2017 is 183 days before September 23rd, 2017. So this is a half of a year. Right, so from March 27th, 2017 to September 23rd, 2017 is, um, well, it's three months, right? I mean, it's uh, three months less a day if you're just counting on, on a Gregorian calendar, but it's actually 183 days. And, and the center date in that, in that period of time is June 22nd, 2017. So, so this, this, this is part of this 777 chiasm with two periods of, and, of 777 days at the beginning, 183 days in the middle with June 22nd as the center, and then two other periods of 777 days, right? So, and, and I have these both divided up into these various uh, periods. Here's the one that starts on September. 23rd and there's this different divisions of the 777 days in these lines with these particular uh events so so i'm not going to go into detail in this right now what's this one this is another one so the point that i'm trying to make is that this march 27th 2017 date that we get from the it's the wrong thing I didn't want that I wanted this one there we go <clears throat> that we that we get from that 10,000 days brings us three days past that and three days is a symbol of the prediction before midnight amongst other things so I think it's significant in that sense that it does tie into um, these structures that deal with the 777 days. And now we have uh, then this battle, which is September 7th, and we know that's uh, 47 weeks, I believe it is, from October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019, 329 days with the March 27th as the center. And so this River Kaishan, Kadesh, and the battle, these are all the second angel's message. Now, in our movement, this is going to relate to um, using the prophecy of Revelation 9 and the prophecy of Ezekiel uh, to confirm November 9th, 2019. And which is going to be the third angel arriving on this line, right? So 
we can see how this relates to those symbols, the river Kaishan, um, uh, Kadesh, and then, then the battle itself. Now, you know, and we could write the verses in here, though we have written the descriptions of what's being talked about um, when we have the 10,000 mentioned, for instance. Um, that's going to be Judges 4.10, right? So, so we could put that there. So... And um, with the river Kaishan, um, that's going to be mentioned. Uh, where's this? You know, we put Kaishan there. Yeah, that's that's going to be actually later, uh, four thirteen, right? So that's going to be Judges four thirteen, um, but that's going to be the River Kaishan. So that that's not in order. These verses here aren't in order in how we're laying them out on the line. But that's where the battle's going to be. So that's why we put the River Kaishan there at October 13th. So Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harasheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kaishan. Now, uh, the 900 we had as... Um, a symbol that is 30 times 30, right? And that does, and that would relate to the 30, 30, 30 that we see in other places, correct? That's what we discussed. Yeah. Now, when we have um, this uh, Sisera with these 900 chariots of iron, we can take iron and associate it with um, with Rome, right? So when we're looking at this as far as this organizational darkness, we can see that there is a message that's going against uh, the message of Parminder. And, and this is, in some ways, this is about Parminder's authority, the, par the authority of Parminder and Tess that in a sense is being challenged. Um, and, and and that was unwitting. I mean, in no way did I ever think that that this was that Parminder was the enemy. Uh, you know, when Tess made her prediction of November 9th, and then I confirmed it with the 391 and a half days. But um, you know, definitely this is the undoing of Parminder, right? And his message. So the message of Cicero. So this battle, this message that's introduced is at the River Kaishan. Now, um, I don't know if I, I don't really have room to put the verse in there, but uh, I guess I could move this other part down a bit. Um, so I'll do this. put 413 here. So I just think we should be consistent in putting in these verses. So when we have... Uh, hey, how did you do that? Did you did... arrow down to make it move? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just asking because I haven't done seen that done with my uh, PowerPoints. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of little tricks you learn if you use it for 10 years. That's what I was watching. I've seen that little trick and that's why I asked. Yeah. Um, okay. So 
when we look at the verses here, if we're going to try to take these verses regarding the ponderings, um, so we have the invitation that's four verse six, and and maybe ponderings isn't the best word where we could call it a, a negotiation. Now the thing is, June 9th, 2018, um, Jeff is going to close the Sabbath, and it's going to happen with a 9-11 prayer, just as it had a year earlier. This is in Italy. So, you know, we we probably should address that in this this line just um put here uh italy 9 11 okay now now we put ponderings there but remember what's going to happen on june 10th um parminder is going to present time setting so maybe what we could call this is negotiation um, because what actually happens on June 10th when Parminder presents his time setting? So we're going to say that this June 9th is part of June 10th because there's uh, you can count it ordinally, which is the, what Daniel from Brazil had done. He didn't count from June 9th. He counted from June 10th as the first day of 126 days, with October 13th being the 126th day. But I counted from June 9th cardinally, with June 9th being zero. Of course, it amounts to the same thing. You end on the same date, but you, you start on a different date, right, with that count of 126. But it's because of the 9-11 prayer that is the anniversary of the one on June 2nd, 2017, that uh, opened the Sabbath and closed the day of Pentecost. Um, so we have this negotiation, 9-11 p.m., um, so we have this negotiation that is Parminder presents a, a message and, and this is going to be negotiated. Now we know, of course, this would be, um, the opposite of what, because this June 9th date is, um, is part of a message that's undoing Cicero's message. Right. So Cicero has this message of organization. And here in Italy in 2018, um, and this is now, is this Italy camp meeting? I guess, is it part of an organizational camp meeting? I know the one in 2017 wasn't. Yeah, the one in 2018. Uh, as soon as that ended, uh, the next there was like my day for people going out, going places, and going back. And then that meeting continued just with the organizational meeting. Okay, okay. So, so it followed. So it was a camp meeting in Italy, followed by an organizational meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but so I mean, we can see that. It, there is a negotiation going on in some ways we can say between Parminder and Jeff and Jeff is going to accept time setting right so I mean technically it's going to be on June 10th that time setting comes into the movement but we're marking it on June 9th because of the 9-11 prayer we're putting those two days together you know, we could put June 9th, 10th if we wanted to, but we're using the June 9th uh, symbol there. And and one of the things that you can see um, in this, uh, um, you know, in this structure, I mean, one is we have this sort of mirror. We have June 9th on the one time, on the one side, and we have September 7th on the other. Right, that's going to be um, part of this structure. And um, um, so I don't know how to sort of address that, but um, we see this negotiation that goes on that where 
uh, the message, we'll call it the message of of Barack is is going to be involved in this negotiation, but it's later going to result in this battle on September 7th. So what I'm saying is that Parminder introduces time setting again to the movement and it's accepted, but it's going to be uh, addressed, that is Parminder's movement addressed in this sort of mirror, right? So the first angel formalized is a mirror. It's connected by the candlestick to September 7th, 2019. Right. So remember, we have the branches of the candlestick. OK, so you can see how those are related. Um, and uh, the verse there, then, that we have is. Um, well, it's basically seven to nine. Uh, that we're going to have this. Um, both the negotiation and the invitation accepted, right? So there's this negotiation go goes on. So we'd probably say seven and eight is the negotiation and and then the uh, invitation accepted is, so verse nine. So that's, I guess I will do it. So that's four verse seven to eight and four verse nine. I don't like these capitals here. Okay, so so that makes sense then how we move through this. Now we're going to see that this K-10,000 symbol is here. Um, should they be switched? But the reason why we put March 27th here is because of the 10,000. Um, but are people okay with this verse here preceding this verse? I was a little troubled with it. Okay. Yeah, so how would how do we resolve that? I mean, we have the 10,000 symbol attached to March 27th. And so that's why we put it there. And the River Kaishan, uh, why did we put it at October 13th? Uh, I can't remember. Okay, so, and Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harasheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kaishan. Right, so that's what we put there. We put that verse there as October 13th. Now we have the 900, which is 30 times 30. I mean, we know that relates to um, the structure of a chiasm, right? Because remember, if we have 30 times 30 times 30, And we divide it by, I think that's what we did. No, we just did 30, 30, 30. That's what we did, 30, 30, 30. And we divided it by, uh, what was it? What did we divide it by? Anybody remember? 12. Was it by 12? Yeah. Okay, 12, that was it. Yeah, so when we divide it by 12, we get this 25,252.5, which gives us this division of a structural chiasm, right? So we normally put the 30, 30, 30 at, at a date presented the division of the structural chiasm. Now, it also has the 2520 in it. Well, in a sense, yes, but it's the 252 and the 525, right? So it relates to the 777 structure. And um, 
Now, as far as um, the spans of time here, uh, you can see that what you have, if you take 777 and you divide it by, um, or you, you subtract the 391 and a half, October 13th isn't the center of the chiasm, but it's fairly close because um, it's 386 days on the one side and 391 on the other, or you could say 385 and a half and, um, you know, 391 and a half, however you wanted to count it. Um, but it's relative the center of a chiasm. It's not the 252 and the 525 side of the chiasm, right? So if you went from September 23rd, uh, 2017, I mean, you would have you would have some options on what you would want to do there. But if I go to September 23rd and I just count uh, 252, like we would. You know, that's going to bring me to June 2nd. So it doesn't really, uh, you know, bring me Ju June 2nd, 2018. So it doesn't really bring me to, to anything other than the beginning of that camp meeting uh, was around, I think it was June 2nd. The camp meeting in Italy began June 2nd. Yeah. And there's uh, Kaish on the, the slaughter of false priests prophesies in First Kings or prophets in First Kings. Um, right. So we know that that's going to first uh, Kings 1840. Um, so, so the river Kaish on the other, the slaughter of the false prophets that obviously would relate. Um, I just noticed that when you had divided seven, seven, seven in half, that's three, eight, eight point five, which has a, contains the same digits as the, um, the seven, seven, seven minus three. 391.5 it's it has 385.5 which is it's got the same digits in it but they're uh, the eights have been doubled and then the fives have been doubled in the other yeah one. yeah okay so it does have the same digits yeah yeah it does so uh but i believe that that cat meeting in italy began on june 2nd if i'm i'm trying to remember uh, so it didn't begin on like the friday it began on uh, the Sunday. I'm trying to remember how that worked because uh, I know I've looked this up before, and so the 252 comes to June 2nd. So there is, uh, you know, there is a division here that that uh, that functions uh, in that way. But I'm just looking this up here. Um, so actually, June second would be the Sabbath, but yeah. So I think it, I think it actually Saturday was the first day, but I'm not 100 certain. But that's what I have in in another place that it was uh, the Sabbath, June second, that the camp meeting began in Italy. Um, so 2:52 from September 23rd brings us to June second. So the week, the beginning of the week of that camp meeting. Yeah, I wouldn't think it would begin on a Sabbath. Yeah, I know. Well, they would have got there Friday. But that's the date. I, I believe I got the date from you. So. I think you normally would start on a. Sunday. On a Sunday. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But but that's, that's the date. I, I believe you gave me the date, so. So I don't know. Um, you weren't, were you at that one in Italy in 2018? Yeah. Okay. When did you get there? Do you remember? I think it would be the Sunday then. You got there Sunday. Okay. Probably, I would think so. I think that's when it would start. Okay. And, uh, it would be in the evening. Sunday evening would be the first presentation. Yeah, that's normally what I would think. Um, but anyway, that's... That's just what I had. Um, so, yeah, that would make more sense to me. So the 252 would end on the Sabbath. So it would be an exclusive count then. Um, but anyway, the point is that we're making is we're putting October 13th as the center 
of this chiasm. Um, now we have, have uh, so I'm just trying to think here. How do we do this? So, so we have, of course, verse 13 relating to October 13th um, as well. And it, it's just, you know, we're trying to resolve whether we can just put the verses out of order. And, and I know we've done it other times in these lines. We didn't put the verses in order. Yeah, um, so it's yeah. not a, uh, it's not like we, this is the first time. Right, I know. Now, Kaishan, of course, means, that means winding, right? What'd you say? Kaishan means winding. I think that's what it is. Let me yeah. check. Now, now, the date of October 13th, remember this is noon on October 13th, and Tess in her presentations, uh, leading up to October 3rd, when she reveals the November 9th date. She actually starts with, um, uh, the, the October 13th and noon in what year is that? Um, so that's the children of whatever the name of the city is. Not 1917. 1917. What's the place called again? Uh, what's Fatima? That? Fatima? Fatima, yeah. Fatima. Fatima. Yeah. Okay. So this this is Fatima. And and so this this miracle of Fatima occurred at noon on October 13th in 1917. And and so here we have this. Um so when we think of the word uh winding, I think of the winding serpent, right? I think of this river as representing uh, Babylon, the papacy. Um, you know, it's it's used as a symbol. Um, and so, That's a here, good one. and so here on October thirteenth, we're going to have this uh, this confirmation of this November ninth date that that Tess has presented. But it's it's going to be undermining based upon the principles that are used to confirm the date, because the principles that are used to, to produce the date are actually not biblical principles. Right, how she, how she produced the date November 9th. Um, it, even though it seemed impressive on the surface, um, it wasn't really that impressive. Um, you know, the different spans of time that all pointed to November 9th, 2019. Um, now, there was a few dates, I think three, uh, that in some ways connected with November 9th. Now, one of those dates was July 27th, but it, it's, Nove it's the, um, the ninth day or, or of the 11th month on uh, the uh, French Republican calendar, right? So that was, um, I can't remember the name of it, <clears throat> but it's the name of that date, right? So uh, let me see if I can find this here. Yeah, the 9th of Thermidor, right? So the 9th of Thermidor, is what event in the French Revolution? Anybody remember? July 27, 1794, the Reign of Terror, right? resulted in the fall of Maximilian Robespierre. Right, so that's the, the reign of terror. And so uh, there was other dates. There's the date, 9th of uh, November, uh, 
the night of broken glass and uh there's some other other things but they weren't all just connected with these dates so there was all of these symbols that pointed to um 2019 and and when when it was presented on october 3rd 2018 um tess never actually said that she was predicting november 9th 2019 but it was inferred and people recognized it. Um, I, I think she was maybe a bit reluctant to state her conclusion, but people draw drew the conclusion themselves. And, um, you know, obviously people were caught up in the whole thing. It was seemed pretty spectacular in how it was uh, presented, how things unfolded. But, uh, um, for me personally, it was really the, the 391 and a half days, not because I did the calculation, but because it tied us to uh, Ezekiel and um, um, uh, Revelation 9, right? So it tied us to something that we already had in the past. And that's that's the way that I could make sense out of it. That's the way I could confirm it to me then it's it had meaning prior to that i basically couldn't see it i mean i saw that what she was saying and i saw that you know there's these november 9th and she has these spans of time the point to 2019 but it wasn't it wasn't very solid uh, it needed another witness and so the 391 and a half witness to that but we can see here that this is on a date and a time that answers to uh, basically their, their message. It's an attack on their message. So we could say that the miracle of Fatima, God counteracts this with this miracle of on noon, October 13th, dealing with Bible prophecy that's going to undo this. So I don't see how we could get, I mean, if we're going to put those dates there, we have to put the river of Kaishan there. Um, and then the March 27th date being the center of that chiasm, the 10,000 being marked there. And then the battle definitely is September 7th, 2019. So um, right now it's 8.13. And that's the other thing is October 13th, we talked about this before, you know, an octagon has eight sides, an octopus has eight legs, and October used to be the eighth month, right? And so we can see the symbol there of Palmoni. And, right. and, that, and that makes sense with the 391.5 symbol being revealed on that date even though I had the symbol before as the movement we had, and, and we had looked at it in 2016 in the sense that we saw the 391 and a half and the 391 and 15 days as being the same symbol, but it's going to be on October 13th, 2018 that we have this, this symbol now become prominent in the movement, right? It becomes part of our message, the 391 and a half. Now, now Parminder and Tess don't really embrace it. Jeff does, right? Um, uh, they really try to downplay that. And so, uh, I mean, they reject it. So they're going to reject this 391 and a half confirming November 9th. It's not significant, um, which to me was a real indication when Tess told me that she didn't think it was, it meant anything. I mean, it was pretty obvious that that was uh, not true. <laughs> so, but she didn't really know anything about this stuff. So, so now we have the battle and we're going to have to find the verses for that. Now, so he gathers there. And then in Judges 4.14, Deborah said unto Brack up for this city, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. So we would definitely have to put that as September 7th. 
Um, so that's going to be from 14 um, to 16, right? And then you're going to have Sisera fleeing. That's going to be verse 17. Um, so this is chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. Now, in, in this whole story of uh, okay, so some comments in the chat there, people can read them. Um, <clears throat> so we have this battle, and then we have the story of JL and the spike, right? So we're just putting that as 9-11. So that story... Um, you know, starts at verse 17. So I'm just going to go over there. We can read this here again. There we go. Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. Now, so Sisera is, is fleeing, and he's going to go to the tent of Jael the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. Now, now we're saying that this has to do with November 9th, um, and that this is, uh, so this spike, what is the spike that's going to go into uh, the head of Sisera? It was a tent spike. Yeah, it's a tent spike. Right, which is something that holds down their house. Yeah. Now we know the word tent is one six eight. That's the number of hours in a week. Right, one six eight hours in a week. Yes. Okay. Now, now part of what was presented in. Um, in that history back in 2018 was the week of Christ study. But is the week of Christ study, it relates, of course, to the week, the final week of Christ. Um, now, the question is, why, what does it mean? Uh, what's doctrine of the sanctuary? I don't, I don't think so, Angela. So she says, tent spike, doctrine of the sanctuary. Um, I don't think so. I think this much more relates to uh, the message of time in the symbolic use of numbers. So one is the word tent is 168, which is the number of hours in a week. It's also, if you multiply it by 77, you get my home address when I was a child, right? 12936, that was the house house address. Um, so- Which are two points to time. Right, yeah. So, uh, so it has that 77 and of course, the number of hours in a week. So it's it's basically a week times seven times seven times 20. Well, I guess it by, by 24, right? Is another way that you could look at it. Is that correct? Because um, you have uh, 24 times seven times 77, so it's not, uh, pardon me, so it's not that, so it's times 77. So it's, it's, it's seven times 77 times 24 to get my home address. But you can see that that 168 is seven times 24. And, and so I think it relates to that message of time that I had introduced. But it says, Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber. Now, so a woman represents a church, but um, now there's peace between this, that is uh, between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the house of Heber. So now Sisera is, you know, uh, the general, that's Jabin's general, right? Jabin's the king of Hazor.
Yeah. Okay. So, so what is this message doing when it's fleeing away? So this is the message of Sisera. It flees away, but when it flees away, it ends up going to a woman, which is a church. But this church is going to put a spike in the head of Sisera. So in the head of this message, it's going to destroy the message at, um, at the head, which would re refer to the intellect. And she, she's going to give him some milk. Right. So, so we've addressed this before. We've had different ideas about it. Um, but now that we're looking at the line in its sort of uh, more detailed way. Can we do something with um, the wife's name. I, I kind of remember um, it had 327 in it. Uh, well, it's 3278. Yeah, yeah, but if it's directly related to um, 3277, which was wild goat. Okay, yep. So when you go to 32, yeah, because it has to do with a goat, a wild goat. Yeah, I remember we did something with her, her name. Okay. Yeah, we I can't did. I remember what exactly it was. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember exactly either. Um, but if we look at this message, so this message of Sisera, it's going to make its appeal. But this appeal is, this is about November 9th. So, so how does that end in the death of that message? Now, we could say that this whole appeal, him fleeing away, is just this appeal that's being made to uh, to the movement from the beginning of that November 9th prediction. But it's relating to November 9th. November 9th is they're making all of this case about all of the stuff that's going to happen on November 9th. Right? Uh, there's a video put out with the prediction of what's going to happen. People remember that. Jeff refers to that. Uh, <clears throat> right. So we look there. We got JL and the spike. That's that's what we're placing there. So, I mean, we could put the verses there. But to understand why this is November 9th. And, of course, it's going to relate all the way back to the beginning of this, September 23rd, 2017. So, so we know that that Sisera's message it flees to a woman, right? Which is a church. Uh, so Judges four twenty one the the gematria, gematria differential for that verse is seven seven seven. So at the end of the seven hundred and seventy seven days, and I think we noted that before. I know I know that we had some. Thing there. That's when it be, going to be when J.L. Heber's wife took a nail of the tent and took an hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. So that's going to be Judges 421. So that's going to be the end of the 777 structure. Um, and what we can do is... Um, we can take from verse 17 um, and just take that whole story up to verse 24. So that's going to be um, 4 verse 17 to 24. We're going to say, is this whole story of JL and the spike? Now, there's a lot in that story. And, and I think 
we could easily take this entire story, this, these passages, and create a line itself. Yeah. Because we can take from when, when Sisera flees to this, to this woman, right, to JL, to hide. I mean, that in itself is a line. We could take this whole thing and create a line. We could zoom in to this third angel arriving, which is 9-11, right? So remember, the story of De Deborah and Barak is on the line of the judges. It's going to be uh, this October 13th uh, to September 7th, 2019 date, right, on that line of the judges. Um and that line of the judges is a zoom into the second angel arriving um, in uh, the line that we have in Jeff's line, where 9-11 is the second angel arriving. And we can see 11-9 relates to 9-11. Right. So this is going to come to a head, no pun intended, uh, at 9-11 in 2019, or 11-9 in 2019 with jail and the spike. But we could take that whole story and we just could create it as a line. That is, it would represent this whole line um, or part of this line. It would represent part of this line. Um, I don't know if we need to do that, but we can see that we could do it, right? Because there's a lot there. I mean, we've created whole lines from single verses. But we know that especially when it comes to each of these main uh, waymarks, especially like the ones where we have a message arrive, uh, those are the easiest ones to zoom into and create a new line. So moving a bit slower than I wanted to, but, but here we have the verses. Now, we just say here that we have this fourth angel arriving and I'm going to say that this is the song of Deborah. Oops, I didn't want that kind of thing. So let's go undo that. I guess I have to do this. So it's the song of Z Deborah. And I have there the symbol of, um, so this is Judges 5. Now, the song of Deborah is, is the song of what? The bee, right? Bumblebee Road. And we have a date there, 1-11, uh, right? January 11th, 20. This is going to be when Jeff recognizes this, this chiasm that we have here. So if we put the song of Deborah as Judges 5, uh, we could create a whole line of the Song of Deborah, right? Yes. And it's just the fourth angel arriving. And so that's one of the things that we're going to do. So we're going to put this line on a line or this way mark on a line. <clears throat> but, you know, and, and see, I was, I would have normally been, you know, wanting to put like July 18 there or something like that. But because of this structure, I could see that that it was much more necessary to put that there. Now, when we go to um, uh, Judges 5, then, uh, we're going to find some symbols that will help this, uh, help us see this more clearly. So it's the Song of Deborah and Barak, right? I just put the Song of Deborah. Um, so Deborah's the, then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, the father of pleasantness on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes, I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, and the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped with water. 
the mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. So one is it's going to tie us to Shamgar, right? Okay. So this Yes. Is, okay. So remember, Shamgar is in the previous line. Um, this line that has to do with uh, the third angel arriving. This is this is chronology arriving. And so we can we can say that we can align Shamgar, the message of Shamgar, with the message of JL, that these are related messages, right? Yes, they are. Yeah. So their message is related to time. And um, so 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 we're tying these two together because they're tied together here. And then it says in verse 7, um, the inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. So Deborah is referring to, you know, FFA or the school of the prophets. Maybe we could say the school of the prophets more specifically because it's on North Bumblebee Road. Um, and And this is a mother in israel this is a church it's it's this um it's a school right and and the home is the first school so this is a mother that's um instructing uh god's people right so the yes the that makes sense them, yeah okay so she arose as a mother in Israel. Now, I'm just seeing how they have this word mother. I mean, I know it's Emma. Um, uh, but uh, just, just says mother, portion, point of departure or division. So I'm just trying to find out the root of this word. Uh, now, You know, it's an aleph and a mem. Uh, okay. So that's to do with parting. Damn a mother. I don't... <clears throat> anyway, I don't know if that, that helps at all, just looking at the word mother. Um, but then we're going to have in verse 8, they chose new gods... Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? Now, this number 40,000 is interesting. Okay. So, so often what we do is we take a number, we will say, well, it's a number of days. And we could divide it either by, um, you know, the actual days in a year or, or a prophetic year. Now, if we divide it by 360, we get 111.1111, et cetera, right? So does that relate to the first day of the 11th month or the, the 11th day of the first month? I mean, the symbol 111, right? So if we're yes, putting... Yes, that, that symbol does represent that. Yeah, so, so we can do that. Now, we could also just do it another way. That is, um, we can take 40,000 and divide it by 111, right? We can divide it by the symbol at the top. And there we will get um, people who know math will probably know what we would get, but because we're just going to get an inversion. We're going to get 360.360, 360, 360, 360, 360, et cetera, right? So we get a symbol for a pro prophetic year, a symbol of time. Right. 360, 360, 360, 360 keeps yeah. going down yeah. until it gets yeah. to Yeah, 360 point, this decimal 360. Yeah. Well, it goes on forever, 
right? Uh, your calculators, if they end on a four, it's just because they can't continue. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So it's just a repetend 360. If they use the word repetend anymore. No right. symbol there. Yeah. So, so we have 360. So we have a symbol of time of this prophetic, uh, prophetic year just by taking the 40,000 and dividing it by 111. So, so however we look at it, we can see that it, in putting 111 there, that that's appropriate because of the symbol of the 4,000, 40,000, okay? Right. Okay, so um, the, so when we, so if we're looking at this, like obviously we have to draw this out as a line. So we, we need to at least get some kind of sketch of a line. Because uh, if we look at the verse itself, the verses, so let's. Um, we're talking about uh, chapter five, right? Yeah, chapter five, right? So we're saying that chapter five can be drawn on, on a line. Because it is the fourth angel arriving. Um, now it's gonna it's gonna have this sort of preamble we'll we'll call it um, where they're praising God for the victory that they have received. All these different symbols, the outpouring of the latter rain, right? The heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped with water. Um, the mountains meant, melted from before the Lord even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the high, highways were unoccupied. So it's going to bring us back to Shamgar, right? And Shamgar is going to be this line uh, that is addressing, well, much more specifically, my, my chronology, the involvement of my, the chronology of my involvement in this movement, as far as representing messages, right? That's what Shamgar's is going to be. And so we can say that this, this JL, who puts the spike in the head of Sisra, is related obviously to that, right? To that chronology, to that understanding. Now, when it says that they chose new gods, um, we can look at this as, this is the apostasy. This is the period of darkness that, that uh, Deborah is going to refer back to. And then there was war in the gates. Now, uh, what is the gates? What does that symbolize? Uh, think of... Um, Place of judgment. Yeah, well, think of the curse uh, dealing with Jericho. There's the foundation and there's the gates, right? Are you trying to apply this as war within the church? War within the movement. Right. Okay. But when we use the symbol of gates, we have war that would be related to the foundation. But this is the gates. This is the battle over control of the movement over FFA, because the gates relate to in that story of of the curse of Jericho. Uh, the foundation is going to refer to um, the death of, of the firstborn. That's Henry, right? That's 1863. Uh, but the death of Herbert is at the setting up of the gates. And the gates, that's where we get in 1860, we get the name Seventh-day Adventist which is you would put the name on the gate, right? You're going to put a na name of a city, you put it on the gate. Right. Right. So, so when we look at the control over FFA, the control over the school of the prophets, that's the war that's being talked about here. Can we see that? In this song of Deborah, it's referring to this history uh, relating to uh, 
that battle over the control of of the movement but specifically uh they had different things that they wanted to control so what did they want to control what did what did parminder want to control where where would the where was the battle So they wanted the school of the prophet. Oh, a battle, <clears throat> a battle is for the minds and the loyalties of people. Yeah, but I'm talking more in 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 this symbolic literal sense, if that makes sense, right? So you have uh, they wanted the school of the prophets, right? And they, and they could sure did. And they could have left it in Bronwyn's control because that's what she wanted. If they had left it in Bronwyn's control. Uh, Bronwyn would have sided, uh, continued to side with Parminder and Tess, right? Yeah. That was, from what we understand, that's the place where she then turned on uh, Parminder because she believed that she was going to be in charge of the school. When she it found out. It was the point of contention. Yeah. So there's a battle there, right? So about the school. Tyler's going to be made the head of the school, according to Parminder and Tess not Bronwyn, right? She's going to be on the outs. So she's not going to support it. She's going to turn on them, right? She's going to leave and go back to America. There's also the battle that happens over the Lambert Church, right? They wanted the church. Now, of course, that was pretty tough for them to to get they they tried to steal the website the lambert website um but they were challenged i remember there was a complaint of all the other material things that were stolen in connection with that right yeah. and so um toby of course owned the church so he he just they just shut it down and sold it okay now so the other thing would be the control of FFA itself, right? So we have we have FFA, we have Lambert Church, and we have the school. So we have these three. Um, so they want to control the name, right? They want to be in charge. Do they get FFA or the school or Lambert? They get none of them, right? None of them. Okay. Yeah, so there's going to be this war, okay? Now, and, and we have uh, among 40,000 in Israel. So we have this symbol, right, that we can tie this as the fourth angel arriving, we're, that we're going to put it at January 11th. But we're, we're saying that this whole story now can be drawn out on a line in some way. Now, um, so the other symbol of 11, 11, 11, what is it? So, you know, so we have 11 and 11 and 11 as January 11th, but what also is 111? A 111 what do we see all the time in this movement? Mm -hmm. What, Stephen? I can't hear what you're saying. 111 weeks. Weeks, right? Because 111 weeks is what? How many days? 777. Yeah, 777 days. Okay. It, it's interesting. I was lying in bed last night thinking about... Um, mine and Heidi's uh, anniversary. And I realized, oh, you know, tomorrow's gonna be, which is now today, that's gonna be our 525th uh, week that we've been married or 525th Monday, because um, it's just the beginning of, of the week, 525th week of our marriage. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but um, we can see that, that the 111 is, 777 weeks so we can tie that symbol there to the structural chiasm uh, also 
Aran says that 4 verse 21 is the 111th verse in Judges. So we need to put that on our chart there. Um, okay. So we got our 111th verse. And I put 4, I don't know why I did that. 421, not 4. 421 is the 111th verse. Um, so here I'm going to put this on this other one. Okay. Um. So what, what we need to do here is, um, I'm going to just go here, you'll see what I'm doing. Okay, so I, I'm not modifying, I just doubled this slide. And so we're going to put the song of Deborah and Barack. And um, we would have to decide. I mean, we're, we're zooming into that way mark here, this fourth angel arriving, right? Or part, yeah. So the song of Deborah and Brack, we're zooming into this. That is, we're zooming into January 11th as a symbol. And we have to create a line uh, that relates to this, right? So... Um, so all of this structure here, all these dates, these are all going to have to change. Uh, well, let's just we can put questions in here, I guess. We don't know what anything is yet. But, uh, so are people satisfied with that line of Deborah and Brack? Well, so far. Yeah, yeah, it definitely um, seems to fit. But now we're going to have the song of Deborah and Brack. And, and so we're going into this line uh, for a reason. Putting all these things as questions is sort of questionable. But OK, so you're going to have a darkness of some sort. So we need to know what, what this darkness is that and we say we said before, well, the song of Deborah and Brack, it repeats, you know, the story. Right. I mean, it's going to tell us the same story, uh, but it's not just doing that. That's right? that's kind of what all the songs do, isn't it? It's telling the story after it's after it's been done. But it's adding else that we don't have in. Uh, right. Or, or the other lines. So so we're zooming into this. So this this. The question is, the song of Deborah and Brack must be relating to some specific aspect that, that is this fourth angel arriving. So the fourth angel arriving is typifying what? Well, that's the second angel. Right, but it's empowering the third. Right. Okay, so if we know that the third is November 9th, Right. Right. That that this fourth angel is an empowerment of that November 9th message. It seems logical. Okay. Right. So so that November 9th message was because if we just go back and look at this line here, right? <clears throat> so here we have this line. This line was a message that preceded November 9th. It's a 777 day message. That preceded November 9th, because it's going to be about this battle that, that, in a sense, resolves on November 9th. It's that close of probation for the false priests, right? So Angela had referred to that passage in 1 Kings 16 or something, uh, where we had uh, the river Kaishan in relationship to uh, the slaying of false priests. Um 
But we can see that this fourth angel arriving is this message that Jeff is marking when he's marking the Levitical chiasm. That is, he's now re recognizing, not, not on that date, but he's recognizing about Daniel chapter 11 for one. But he's going to recognize later that there is this structure that exists that points to March 27th, 2021. And, and that this Levitical chiasm is about the message to the Levites. So one of the things we know about this is it's, it's the Levitical chiasm that's being represented here. Right. And then we, we had these, uh, these dates, um, September 7th, November 9th, and uh, January 11th, you know, that they they all represented, uh, uh, well, that one, you added it up, it was 327, and if you reversed it, it became um, uh, 1,011, and so, or 1,101 or something. So it ends up representing the, the start date. And there's a 63 week period, 441 days uh, from January 11th, 2020 to March 27th, 2021. So, so we, we have that. Now we also have another January 11th and that's gonna be the end of, of Colin's line, right? That he didn't want to set the date on, right? He didn't wanna take those 65 days at the beginning and match them at the end. He just wanted to uh, them to represent Biden and Trump, right? And so just Biden, use the numbers. That's all he did. Just use the numbers as symbols, but he didn't want to put the dates there. But we know it ends uh, the first day or the the eleventh day of the first month, January eleventh, uh, twenty twenty three, right? So that's the natural conclusion, right? So one of the things we can see that is is we have. We have something that's related to this 11, 11, uh, 111, I guess we should say, um, which also symbolizes the 777 itself. And, and, and so we can create a line, I believe, with Song of Deborah and Barak that's going to um, uh, address that, right? So... Um, Rid of this, get rid of these, because we don't know what these spans are yet. Um, leave that, leave that, and okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna have, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna have this line somehow uh, make sense once we're done with it. Um, but we have to decide what this line is about. And um, so this is about something internal in the movement that relates to this symbol of uh, January 11th. And, and, and so the simple thing that I would put here is I would put January 11th, 2023 as this end. Okay. So I'm just being presumptuous here, putting that here. Um. And then I would have to figure out where we're going to start with the period of darkness and when this message arrives. Now, I would think that we would have the January 11th, 2020 in here somewhere, whether that's going to be the start of this or whether that's going to go some other place. I don't know. Right. So I haven't, I haven't figured that out how we're going to do this yet. But that makes sense, right? What I'm suggesting. So we're gonna we're we're not gonna be able to do it today, but we will do this tomorrow. We will construct this line. And what we're gonna have, I don't know yet. But uh, we can see that this is going to be a period of time. Whether we're going to have the seven 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 days mark the beginning and the end. I don't know what 777 days are before January 11th, 2023, but I'm going to check. Um, go back. Um, so that brings us to November uh, 25th, 2020, which 
I don't know if that means anything to me. It's going to be a Wednesday. Um, it's going to be about uh, 11 days before um, uh, the declaration so of December 6th. That was November 25th, you said? Yeah, November 25th. It's a Wednesday in 2020. So it's it's 11 days before the declaration. It's one day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, one day after Thanksgiving. Okay. I mean, because there was a Thanksgiving thing in one of our lines, I remember. Yeah, yeah. November 24th, 2022. Uh, 20, uh, um, November 24th is is on our line. But that's where we get the 2688 days to April 5th, 2030. And, th and that's what I would put as, you know, just as a guess that 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 fourth angel arrives is the April 5th, 2030 date. But but you can see that that we should be able to construct a line here. Now, obviously, you know, we might decide that November 25th is where we're going to start it. Um, but I don't know, right? So it's it's hard to say. <clears throat> any any thoughts before we close with prayer? Is I don't know what else we could do right now without getting too involved. Okay, hey, just mm -hmm. uh, a quick one. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jan uh, Stephen. I just want to see the chronology. Looks like it's, uh, I'm just going to talk you're really muffled, <laughs> Stephen. Stephen, you're, you're really muffled. I can't hear what you're saying. Yeah, it sounds like something's in front of your mic. No, no. I don't know why. But um, can you hear me now? Okay. No, you're still very it's muffled. Same. Still very muffled. Okay. Um, I was just doing the chronology of... Um, I just, I just came across the quote by Alan White concerning JL. And uh, she said that that first and fifth uh, she mentioned her okay, You're going to have to type, type it in that I can't hear what you're saying at all, Stephen. Yeah, okay. it's real hard, Stephen. I, I just, I'll just save it for now. Yeah, just type it in. The, well, you could type it in the chat or, or could save it for tomorrow i think is what you said yeah, yeah he say he types fast <laughs> so um we determined uh the all right the gates um to be uh the position of leadership is that what we were well, determined it's, there it's more over the the organization right the church lambert church the school of the prophets ffa that's what they were fighting over control of the names the the corporations the institutions right it wasn't right. it wasn't a foundational battle in the sense um i mean obviously the doctrines and stuff were were issues but really it was about control of the organization that's what the battle was yeah, the judgment is made in the gates right yeah judgment is made in the gates but Okay, but so I don't that puts think it that into that, a leadership role. Yeah, but I don't think that that's what it's uh, referring to in this context here. It's it's about the battle over the institution. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And, and the connections that it's making. Yeah. I mean, because symbols can have more than one meaning we know. So, you know, we can look at one symbol and say, well, does that apply? Or does this other one apply? And I, I think it would be that the battle is over the name, the name, the institutions, the gates. The control of, of the city, right? Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, because they want to be the ones, you know, who are judging, right? They want to be the ones who are um, in control of the movement of the messages. W which is my point. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, Stephen, just remember. I mean, expressing the leadership position. That yeah. So, Stephen, if you can, uh, you know, somehow get your mic to work properly. I'm not sure why it's so fuzzy. But uh, anyway, we'll come back to this tomorrow then. Okay. You hear me better now? 
Yeah, that's better now. So what were you going to say? Okay. So I was just going to say that uh, when I was doing the chronology of the judges, that uh, I seen that Ellen White uh, talks about JL, that she says when Cicero came out, came to her, she uh, she just thought he was a stranger. She didn't know that uh, he who he was. You know, so she was just sort of being kind to him initially, and then when he had fell asleep, then after that their time, she came to understand who he was. And okay, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that could make a difference in, in your, your understanding. Mm -hmm. Is that um, just something to consider? Yeah, I, well, I understood that. I understood that point. Yeah, because she, um, because there is, his, his identity is seen later. It's not seen at first, right? And, yeah. and that would be true with Parminder and his message. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that would relate to, um, uh, well, with JL on the spike, November 9th, that's sort of in that history, the it's, it's unmasked, but for many of us, um, you know, I mean, we, we knew about it beforehand. We made the decision prior to November 9th, but that's going to yeah, be so maybe, maybe when JL, Learn to read that. You maybe put September seventh. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying. To so put September seventh with JL recognizing, um, yeah, I'd have to think about that. Okay, but it's, it's a good idea. So anyway, we'll come back to this tomorrow. And uh, thanks, Stephen. So let's uh, close with prayer, dear Father in heaven. Thank you for the study today. We ask for your, um, your blessings upon this day. Pray again for Heidi, that she can know what's wrong with her eyes and um, um, for her appointment, that you can give the doctor wisdom. And we just pray, Lord, that uh, you can use each of us to your glory. Uh, we pray for your blessing uh, upon this message, upon this movement. Help us to be faithful. Be with us uh, until we come to meet again to study your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank